Hello and welcome to Charlie's desk. On the desk today we have a Perkins Brailler which is um, has the panels removed so you can get inside there. Um, I have a Squirrel Devices caliper with a refreshing braille display for measuring and then I have a screwdriver and some tweezers. Um, because I am going to be taking apart the embossing assembly of this Perkins Brailler and trying to put it back together again. I did this before, so I think I know how to do it. Um, but it's pretty cool once you get in there and understand um, how it works. So in previous videos, I talked about kind of what makes a Perkins Brailler different than um, other Brailers up to that point. And it's that, uh, oh, there's a garbage truck or something like that. Um, it's that the embossing assembly moves over the paper. So in, in, in the, the Braille writers of, of yesteryear, um, the paper moved through the Brailler and the embossing happened at one point, kind of like a typewriter. Um, in a typewriter, the scroll of paper moves and all of the print keys meet at one central point and the paper moves across that point. Um, but in the Perkins Brailler, the embossing assembly moves over the paper. So that's pretty complicated how they make that happen. It took me, well, I had to take it apart to understand. Um, okay, so how, how can, so what happens when you press a Braille entry key? Um, so the way the keys on the Perkins Brailler are set up is that when you push down, um, the way they sort of engineered the lever, it creates a pulling force um, and it rotates this rail that runs all the way across um, the back of the uh, brailler and it's 11 and one quarters inch wide, which, you know, kind of matches up with your, your braille paper. Um, and, and so this is how wherever the embossing assembly is along this track, and there's six sort of rails to the track, one for each dot, um, wherever the embossing assembly is along this track, um, when you press a key, it'll, it'll rotate and it will um, press the, a dot upwards to emboss. Um, so I, uh, there was like a little back covering to the embossing assembly. So, what's a metaphor for this? Um, it's kind of like a little rectangular tower and in the center of the tower, there are six kind of pillars and they're made of metal and um, they poke through the roof um, in, in six dots and that's uh, an above, directly above the roof, um, above the dots is the, the die box, which is just um, six uh, concave sort of recesses. Um, and then the paper is sandwiched in between uh, the rods which are pushing up and then the recesses in the die box. And uh, you got a braille sandwich, you've made a braille letter. So, um, but what's cool about um, the sort of pillars that go upward, these metal rods, is they're all kind of on skates. Um, that ride along the rails, and so when when um, the rail is rotated, it pushes up uh, this little skate, which pushes up sort of the pillar or rod, which is spring-loaded, and um, at the same time, when I made that video about the space bar, since you're pressing down the, the space bar mechanism to advance, and you're also clamping down the dive box on um, onto the embossing head to make that braille sandwich, braille paper sandwich. Um, okay, so at the at the embod and so let's imagine this little tower is on um, a, two wheels, and these wheels roll along this track that's eleven and a quarter inches long. And why is it? It is. It is small. It is one and one quarter inches. Um, okay, so I'm gonna take the side panel off on the lower part of the embossing assembly, which has the wheel on it, so we can get in there and see the little uh, 
the little skate that all of the um, steel rods are mounted on. And then hopefully put it back together again. Um, if for some reason um, the the rods um, that oops that make the dots um, get lower than sort of their roof, um, they might not go back up again. In which case, the feedback that you would feel would be you would press on the keys, but they wouldn't go up. So um, that could be if if that's what's wrong with your brailler, it might be that um, the rods that uh, poke up the dots, they're sort of out of place. Um, okay. So I'm gonna remove this little lower piece. Slides right out. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, okay. It's a little bracket. It has one wheel on it and then it's bent to ride along this little slippery metal uh, track. Um, okay, so I'm gonna just take out, uh, I think this is dot, dot three. Oh, oh no, it must be dot one. Okay, here it is. Okay, so yeah, the, um, the, the rod is, is bent and angled. So it goes from, you know, the parallel sort of skate on the foot of it to the exact right spot in the braille cell. And so it's about, how long is this thing? It's about two inches. It is two and a half inches tall. And yeah, it's got this little kind of rectangular metal skate on the bottom of it. And in between each of these skates at the bottom, there's a little black metal plate that I have to take out with tweezers, I think. Um, and I think the purpose of this plate, which is kind of shaped like a fat T, <laughs> it's, it's the exact same size as the skate at the bottom um, of the the rod that embosses the, the braille dots. Ooh, I lost the spring. And yeah, and there's a, so it narrows to be the exact width of the braille dot at the top of this little skate. Um, it, it narrows and there's a spring that goes around it. So, um, you know, and when it pop, goes up, it'll pop back down. Um, so that maintains tension on it. And then in between each skate at the bottom of the embossing assembly. Um, there's a little flat piece of black metal that I guess is like, oh, maybe there was some sort of grease on this to make sure they didn't stick to each other. So now I'm just gonna try and put that little piece back in and try and um, get this thing going again. So I, I did get a question about um, some refreshable braille displays and I asked my friend and they are gonna come on there and be interviewed about it. So that'll be good because um, they know a lot more about that than me. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how to put this thing back together. Oops. I uh, was trying to grab this spring with the tweezers but then I squeezed too hard and it sprung away because it's a spring. Can't blame it for that. Okay, so now I'm trying to put um, the skate back onto, back in there and get um, the top of the dot sort of threaded up through the roof of that embossing assembly. Okay. So I've knocked another dot out of place and it won't work if I don't get it back in. Okay. Yep. So the purpose of the piece at the bottom that I removed with the little wheel on it is to keep um, these skates at the exact right height um, so, so that this doesn't happen, so that they don't fall out and jam things up. So I'm kind of like holding all the sort of legs in place with my thumb as I try and slide back in the 
metal plate with a wheel on it, and it has two screws holding it in place. Philip said screws, they're pretty small. Maybe a quarter of an inch, a little longer, three eighths of an inch. Oh, and there's a there's a back plate that I removed, but just so that um, you can get in there and feel it. Okay. But yeah, that's that's it's pretty cool, I think. So I guess the way to describe it is like six <laughs> six legs on these skates that um, they slide along these rails, and the when the you press a key, it rotates the rail and pushes upward on the skate, which um, creates the, the dot. So yeah, that's that's this part of this thing. Um, the, the, the thing that I don't understand right now is the, the paper. There's something wrong with the paper feeding mechanism. And I can kind of see that like some things aren't in alignment and maybe that's it, but I don't know why. So yeah. Anyways, um, thanks for watching. Bye.